Well, good evening, honorable attendees, and thank you very much for joining us this evening for the first Coupé Free Speech Debate Series event held under the patronage of the Swiss Impact Investing Association. Uh, this year we celebrate that Coupé has been synonymous with the advocacy of a free, open, liberal society based on the freedom of expression for now more than 220 years. In other words, Coupé has one of the longest traditions of bringing together leaders, thinkers, influencers uh, to debate issues and explore ideas across politics, religion, science, the arts and literature. The tradition was started in 1805 by Madame de Stalp, who held a salon in nearby castle of Coupé, which some of you uh, visited earlier today by bringing together the greatest minds of the Enlightenment. Hence, this series should be seen as a continuation of and putting into practice the principle of this Copé group, namely that here in Copé reigns tolerance, respectful cultural diversity, and a real cosmopolitanism, where intellectuals from different geographical, confessional, and linguistic backgrounds meet to dialogue with respect for each other, believing that our differences could enrich the speakers as well as the attendees. Madame Vestal was the soul of the Copic group, and her more personal work eventually marked European history. As we, as we more um, modestly hope that this new debate series also will influence and help shape the Swiss impact investment ecosystem and beyond. Therefore, before we proceed with tonight's event, Speakers and attendees are reminded to abide by the rules of the series, including ensuring that our guests sit up here on the stage, uh, are received, receive a courteous and respectful uh, hearing. Speakers and attendees are also reminded that the event will be filmed and subsequently disseminated on the Swiss Impact Investing Association's YouTube channel and other social media platforms. Today we are joined by uh, seven uh, distinguished members of the Swiss Impact Investing Ecosystem, uh, normally also ranging from academia, but unfortunately our two professors from the Grand Institute Geneva and EMD uh, uh, have cancelled today for different reasons. International organizations, intermediaries such as advisory firms, um, as well as regulators as represented by the state of Geneva, Although Mr. Nigli is here in his own personal capacity, it should be added. That's okay. um, they are gathered today to debate tonight's predetermined motion. Each speaker, with the exception of the team captains, have been allocated maximum five minutes to present the arguments for or against the motion. When there's one minute left, I will use the little clock. <laughs> And when the five minutes has gone, I will drown you out. So there will be no possibility of going beyond the five minutes. These are the rules. So today's motion is that this house believes Switzerland is and will remain ranked as one of the world's leading and most competitive financial centers, with Geneva being one of its two main and universally recognized hubs along with Zurich. So, um, now please take your smartphones, those of you who have a smartphone, and go to slido.com, slido.com, and join as a participant using the code nine, uh, hashtag nine, no, the speakers are not allowed to participate, 1901 321. Okay. Hashtag 1901. 321. Okay. So please vote now for A or against no. The motion Switzerland Geneva slash Geneva is positioned amongst the world's leading financial centers on sustainable development. If you don't agree with that, you vote no. If you agree with that, before the debate starts, you vote yes.
Are you, are you able to vote? Yes. I don't see. Uh, hashtag uh, 1901321. So the attendees can challenge the speaker at any time during the debate by raising a point of information, although it remains at the discretion of the individual speaker whether to accept the injunction. So have everyone had the chance to vote? Yeah? Have everyone had the chance to vote? Not yet. Are you able to access slido.com? Not, if your wireless is not working as it should in here, uh, there's also a wireless connection called uh, Coupe 1296 Coupe. That's a password if you can't access your, your connection. Okay? It's important that everyone votes because that's the whole point of the debate. You want to have a winning team at the end of the debate. Hashtag, hashtag 1901321. Okay, if that's the case, uh, I now move to Mr. Mark Haller, co founder of Better Nature to open the case for the proposition after a brief introduction of your team members. And that's the mic. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. As the first speaker in the group in favor of the motion, it's my honor to introduce the, uh, the, my fellow speakers. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. So Mr. Chairman, I, re I repeat, it's my honor as the leader of the team in favor of the motion to introduce the speakers. I'm a little put off by this British Parliament uh, set up here, but uh, <laughs> many of my English colleagues are more used to it than I am. Nevertheless, I am very proud to say that we have a, a, a very strong team here. I shall open uh, the debate by uh, laying out why I think the motion is, is self-evident. Um, uh, but my speakers with, that follow me are also from various high-level uh, parts of the Geneva ecosystem. Following me will be Eckhart Ernst, who is uh, behind, sorry, doing my back on you. Uh, Eckhart is, a, is a, an economist of a, 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 a very high reputation. He has worked in OECD and the Euro European Central Bank. He's currently at ILO, where he is uh, a senior civil servant looking after global uh, labor market trends and the future of work. But in addition to his ILO job, he is also a co-founder of the Geneva Macro Labs, which is a platform that helps to identify, develop, and implement solutions to global challenges. I hope in this debate he will talk about the importance of equity in sustainable finance and, of course, the just transition. Uh, after him will be uh, Paul Clemens Hunt uh, here, who hardly needs an introduction. Paul is known around Geneva, especially as the founder and longtime leader of the UNEP Finance Initiatives, which is, has grown to impressive dimensions and is doing some extraordinary work. But he came from a business background before that and went back to a business, back to business uh, life after that, where he is both uh, co-founder of the Blended Capital Group and a director of Mission Purpose, which is a branch of Mission de Rea in, in the UK. He's also involved in a private equity capacity in businesses that focus on digital, technological, and sustainability development. So Paul, we look forward to hearing from you. And last, but certainly not least, uh, my friend Nicolai Nigni, again, hardly needs an introduction. Although he's speaking in his personal capacity, he is uh, the key to most of the innovative uh, actions of the Geneva government around sustainable development. And um, 
including uh, a lot of initiatives relating to digital governance, public-private collaboration, and technology. He is, uh, that includes the Trust Valley for Digital Trust and Cyber Resilience. He's worked with CERN. He is a part-time professor of practice at the Graduate Institute. And before that, he's had a long, uh, long career in diplomacy, where he has, has led some of the most sensitive uh, peace negotiations uh, that Switzerland uh, has brokered. So, delighted to have all of them. Shall I uh, simply lead on, or would you like Arthur to introduce his team? <laughs> okay, so can I speak for 10 minutes before I give you the signal? <laughs> okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to introduce the, the team in, in favor of the motion. As I said in my introduction, I think the motion is self-evident. What I'm going to do in my five minutes is to lay out the reasons why I think Geneva uh, deserves the title of leading sustainable finance uh, center. Uh, I was taught early on in my career that in a time-limited environment, you start with the conclusions because then at least you've got those out on the table. My conclusion is that Geneva represents a unique ecosystem uh, uh, in, in the area of, of sustainable finance. It has in one place, in one city, in one uh, region, uh, more of the elements required to make sustainable finance a success than any other financial center. We all think of the great financial centers like, like London, its ambition to be Singapore on Thames. That seems to me a, a far cry from sustainable development. But let me also say that in order to move towards sustainable finance, which I think we all believe is necessary, it's not just a question of putting a light green coat of paint over business as usual. Too many people think that, okay, well, sustainability is a concern of many of the, of the clients of the financial system. We uh, will prove that we are uh, aware that we're onto that agenda. It's not that. Geneva has all of the elements it's needed. First of all, it is a very significant financial center with specialization in microfinance and impact and responsible investment and increasingly well known for those things. So as a financial center, it has great credibility. But it's also, and people tend to forget this, the technical and operational capital of the international development system. Uh, New York may be the political capital, but Geneva is where the SDGs are supported from a technical and operational point of view. It's also an environmental capital, the Secretariat of the International pa Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the headquarters of the International Union for Conservation of Nature, the head international headquarters of WWF, and, and many, many more. And as I said when introducing Ekehart, the uh, it is also uh, extremely important in the current and very important debate on the equity transition. ILO is leading some extraordinary work on green jobs and the just transition. And there are increasingly organizations that combine these different elements. I am a senior advisor to an international network of financial centers for sustainability. There are 39 of the world's leading financial centers in this network, and they chose Geneva as their headquarters. Uh, there's also what I call the sort of power ecosystem. Uh, Geneva is the headquarters for the World Economic Forum and its annual uh, Davos uh, events. It's the headquarters of the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. So not only uh, links into business uh, power and money, but links into those parts of the business that are concerned with uh, uh, the sustainability transition. Of course, I hardly need to mention the academic networks here. The, Internet, uh, the uh, Ashuri Gay, the Graduate Institute, the University of Geneva has two centers on sustainable finance, just as Ashuri Gay has two programs on sustainable finance. EPFL in Lausanne, IMD in, in Lausanne. Uh, there is an ecosystem just around the Lac Léman that is very impressive. And of course, these all come together in an annual event called Building Bridges, which is looking at how we can make the transition to sustainable finance by looking at all the different facets and all the different components of the, of the ecosystem uh, in order to do that. Uh, this is an annual event that brings increasingly people from all around the world and they come to Geneva because it is the place where you can find out what's happening, what's emerging, what are the new issues that are out there. 
And so I come back to this and say, saying that Geneva, unlike many more powerful, more better known uh, financial centers, is the only one in the world, and I challenge the other team to, to prove me wrong on this, that, that brings together all of the elements of the ecosystem required to make the transition to sustainable forms of finance. I insist Sustainable finance is not a green coating on business as usual in the financial world. It is not mainstream, it is a new stream, and we need to get used to it. And a final comment uh, on the materials that were distributed. There is, uh, they show Geneva not that high, quite high, but not that high on, on the uh, Green uh, Financial Center Index. I would simply like to point out that those that publish that index are <coughs> offer consultancy services in helping financial centers rise up the index. So the reliability of that, I think, needs to be questioned. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hello. Yes, the audience is allowed to, to clap. So thank you very much. Um, I uh, now look to Mr. Arthur Woods, founding partner of Equity for Humanity, to briefly introduce the other guest speakers on your team and then to open the case for the opposition. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I... It's all right. Can you hear me at the back? No. Or you can use the mic. Yeah. Mike. I shall now be lashed to the point. I understand this is a monk. Is this point working? It is working, yes. Okay, take this one. Turn it off. I understand this is a month debate, ladies and gentlemen, and hopefully I haven't picked up any nasty habits, but I have to admit, faced with this plethora of, of what I can only call superlative expertise, uh, I was tempted this morning to place some Viagra on my, uh, on my lip bar to strengthen my British stiff upper lip. However, I think when we look at this issue, we, we need to think about the word that Mark just used. He used the word unique, ladies and gentlemen. Geneva is a unique jurisdiction. And I shall return to that point. But I also note there is a gentleman from the United Nations on the other side who will proffer his opinion. And I have to say that listening to the United Nations is usually a bit like listening to the Pope uh, or, the Can or the Archbishop of Canterbury give a lecture on orgies. They may be very good at immaculate conception, but continue the analogy I've seen so many balls up in the relatively recent past. I'm sorry, I'll talk my low introducing your team before you... I shall now introduce my team, therefore, <laughs> let me come on to the practitioners, as I would call them, uh, to which I have the great pleasure of introducing first uh, Charlie Brown. Excuse me, I need my glasses. <laughs> Uh, Charlie Graham Brown. Uh, Charlie has been working in impact investment since 2009. He was one of the partners of Blue Orchard, who I consider to be one of the pioneers here in Geneva, uh, and is now heading up the uh, is the managing general partner of Seedstar Early Step Fund, uh, a true pioneer in this space. Uh, that has worked across the sector with, I believe, over 100 organisations in the company, Charlie. The other person I have the pleasure of introducing is Mr. Ben Benerji. He has a long CV down here, I should be brief. Uh, an engineer, social entrepreneur, a board, advisory board director of coal institutions such as East West Institute, uh, the Climate uh, Leadership Group. He is the president, I understand, of the uh, Swiss uh, Investment Impact Investment Association, the oldest and long-standing, and I'm certain he tells me the largest uh, impact investor. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, we have practitioners on our side here. I recall, standing here in Coppe, that we stand on the stones bequeathed to us by Madame Stahl, who was the original neutral, being married to the Swedish ambassador, the original neutral, neutral uh, individual to convene the specialists, not specialists, the philosophers of their time in the Enlightenment, of Schlegel, of Goethe, of Rousseau. 
those great individuals that framed the Enlightenment. And ladies and gentlemen, that Enlightenment was based on the scientific revolution. So today, what I'm going to ask you to think about is when Rousseau, the citizen of Geneva as he was known, crystallized liberté, égalité, and fraternité, he didn't, ladies and gentlemen, talk about which absolutist monarch did a little bit of fraternity. He believed in universal values. And I know you in this room, representing sustainable investment, reflect those universal values. About uniteness, we heard the words. And indeed, in 2006, ladies and gentlemen, when I was a Brit working for Americans, the Ashoka, the world's largest supporter of social entrepreneurs, I was invited here to COPE by UBS to speak on uh, a paper that I had written with, with UBS called Market Solutions to Philanthropy. And I proposed that they fund, through venture capitalism, social entrepreneurs. I proposed the first, at the time, or at least one of the first, blended value structures. I proposed what was to become the social impact bond. But was it this jurisdiction that took it up? No, ladies and gentlemen, it was not. It has been driven by the Anglo-Saxons quite conclusively. And today, ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about uniqueness, I'm afraid what we do here in Geneva is a Me Too strategy. And the sad thing is, ladies and gentlemen, all these years on, one could go, well, look at the success of impact investment, 1.16 trillion, or 2.5 trillion, if I believe uh, GSG. A compound growth rate of 62% and 82%. We could talk about the success of blended value. But has it really been that successful, ladies and gentlemen? After all, climate is now heading to 2.5 degrees. Where investment is in place. We are definitely hitting 1.5. The SDGs, ladies and gentlemen, framed so brilliantly we were laid out, is now 20% below where we started in 2015. We are now need to deploy from 3.5%, 8% of gross domestic product. And inequality, when I stood within these walls, was about 10 people that, sorry, or 100,000 people that held the same amount of wealth as the bottom of 3.5 billion. Point of order. Are you second? Greatest of pleasure. Are you for the motion or against the motion? <laughs> That's a very interesting question. The point I'm making, ladies and gentlemen, is that there is nothing unique about what we're doing here in Geneva. You have swallowed the venture capital Kool-Aid. We are all going backwards. We are not succeeding, which the opposition would seem to believe that we maybe are. So to answer your question, no, I'm not. I am a bit like Will McAvoy at this point in time, who believes that in America is the greatest country in the world. I'm not between back or right, but what I do believe is recognizing the first problem we have is recognizing there is one. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it is sad that we look at our current marketplace. But Geneva could be a great jurisdiction. The technology is here in the form of CERN technology that allows you to think about visualization. Courtesy of the United Nations, the databases are here, ladies and gentlemen. But that unique opportunity is not being seized by this jurisdiction. That is the sad fact and reality. And the opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, is to actually seize that opportunity, not to continue to pursue the hierarchical silos that we do, which what we do at the moment is we discover a great idea, we say that's invent a new metric, and then we go out the venture capital model money. If you truly believe in the SDGs, if you truly believe in supporting the climate issue for your children, do not ask for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for me, ladies and gentlemen. So I therefore urge you not to accept this motion and to reject it, because this is a Me Too jurisdiction, but it could be something great and it could be something unique. I move, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Council Wood. Um, I now look to Mr. Eckhart Ernst 
from the ILO and the Geneva Bank Collapse to continue the case for the proposition. You have five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you very much for the invitation to be here. I can reassure you that I'm neither the Pope nor an Archbishop, and I'm not trying to preach you or to lecture you tonight, even though I represent uh, the International Labour Organization, but not only. And I wanted to make the case indeed, and as a bit of a variation on the theme, I feel like a bug fuhrer here tonight uh, for what Mark was saying earlier, that uh, Geneva is indeed the hub that makes sustainability happen, or sustainable finance happen, if, if you want. Uh. So obviously we have heard already about the big shifts uh, that uh, sustainability uh, finance has experienced. You just look at the numbers, uh, growth rates of uh, double-digit figures over the last three years in terms of sustainability uh, bonds, among others. And obviously that requires um, uh, an additional support. But I think what is important to understand, and in a sense the, um, the opposition had, had certainly a point, is that not everything that is called sustainability actually is. What we really needed is re it requires sustainability finance, requires an intellectual cloud to ensure that these new forms of finance produce both financial, ecological, and social returns, triple wins as we would call them. And I think, and Mark alluded to this already before, uh, Geneva really offers an ideal ecosystem for that. What do I mean by that? An ecosystem is really a place where different parties, different uh, intellectual leaders, different um, financial investors come together in order to produce these new products. Because not everything uh, is, is green, as we have just heard before. A lot still needs to be done. I would question a bit uh, the position that uh, we have really not achieved much. If you look at some of the numbers that my organization produces in terms of uh, employment, in terms of the quality of employment, they have enormous uh, progress has been made over the last uh, uh, two or three decades. Obviously, always can, much more can be achieved. Also, if you look at the investment that has been done in terms of uh, 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 sustainable energy, a lot has been achieved already. More needs to be done, and that's why we need to bring all partners on board where I believe that Geneva plays a, plays a unique role. And, and I, I will give you some numbers to, to back up that, that idea. We, when, when we started Geneva Microlabs, and I'll tell you a bit uh, before I conclude what this is, when we started Geneva Microlabs, we looked a bit at the Lake Geneva area to understand the ecosystem in which we want to place our association. Now, the whole Lake Geneva area has roughly a million people with university degrees. That's enormous if you think about Geneva. The canton has only 500,000 people. So there's a lot of people in the Lake Geneva areas that have, uh, that have uh, the intellectual capacity to stimulate and produce a uh, uh, sustainable impact. Now, these people do not only come from Switzerland, they come from more than 150 nation, uh, nations around, uh, around the world. With all kinds of diversity uh, uh, aspects, obviously different uh, age groups, different uh, gender, uh, and, uh, and different cultural and ethnic background, if you want, which is important to understand and to produce sustainable ideas. Because obviously, Geneva cannot produce uh, solutions for all the parts of the world. What Geneva can produce is produce this, this uh, ecosystem, produce the, the stimulus to imp implement change uh, across the world where it's needed. And so um, we, we have this diversity also in terms of the institutions. Mark alluded to it already. We have international organizations, obviously, like mine. We have uh, which are around 40 different organizations and uh, uh, roughly 40,000 uh, international civil servants like me. Uh, we have financial institutions, sustainable financial institutions. We have academia. We do have multinational and, and uh, obviously thriving uh, Swiss private uh, companies that produce and bring in new intellectual capital into the, into the area. So what is interesting is that obviously when you put these, these different institutions uh, side by side, uh, not, not much will happen, but what Switzerland offers, and Geneva in particular, is a multiple uh, uh, platforms for exchange, such as Foros Impact Camp and Geneva Microlabs, where we believe that we're not only producing uh, a think tank, but also a do tank, to help stimulate, produce new ideas. And I wanted to conclude with one specific element that is really unique to Geneva. It's in, in